Hello and welcome. Let's look at how we can create a SharePoint list with Power Automate. In other words, automating SharePoint list creation based on a template. Let's jump right into it. Let's create a Power Automate flow. It could be from a solution or non-solution aware. I will just create this as a manual triggered flow. This first step is to uh, initialize a variable. I like to initialize this, this object to create the fields data or metadata uh, for our columns in the SharePoint list. So I'll ju just create an object um, with some values, a list of values. And these values, in our case, is just the, the column names. In a later step, you could define more uh, values such as uh, settings for each column. The next step is to create a send HTTPS uh, request. And this one, this specific request is the one that creates the list. So here you specify your site and then the method needs to be post. And then this uh, URI that we need to use in order to create a list needs to be this API slash web slash list. Um, the content type should be application slash JSON, and then this O data is important. Um, if you look at the documentation, it's, it's a bit different uh, on what they suggest, but using uh, the O data, I at least had to do that. In the body, you need to specify this um, double underscore metadata and then a type called SP list. That is uh, the main requirement for creating a list. Uh, with this API. And then you can specify uh, some properties that defines the, the list. So here I have the base template, 100, so that's just a custom list. There's some other um, base templates you can choose. I have them in the links. Then you can add a description to your list and then a title. I'll just, I've added the title uh, in the top so you can specify that. And then there is this enable attachment property, I'll just set it to false because I don't need to have any one on my list. Let's test it. It ran successfully. It's important here that you copy the value uh, from the body because we need that in the next step to parse the JSON. Um, and parsing the JSON um, makes it easier for us to utilize uh, the response we get from the create list uh, later in our flow. Our next objective after the list creation is to create the actual fields or the columns. Uh, so for this, we will use another HTTP request. Uh, I'll rename it create product field. Again, it's a post method, and then we will use the underscore API slash web slash list. And then we need to provide the GUID. Um, that's where we need to use the parse JSON from the last one, where we will check the ID and then slash fields. Again, the content type is the same as the last one. And then in the body, we will specify what kind of field we need to create. So double underscore meets the data. And then it's another type here. So the type is sp.field. And in the next um, step, we can specify the title of the, the column. And here I will utilize the variable uh, I did in the previous step. So the variables, fields data, and then the value, tap into that one, then check the first uh, value in the list and then utilize the value from the column name. Next up, we will specify which kind of field we are talking about here. So I've specified field type kind two. So this specified set text value and we have several several different kinds of, of fields, and I have a link in the, in the documentation to that. Then we can set the required uh, unique values and then 
the static name also. We need to create a second column and I'll just copy from the previous one and then call this one create color field. So this will be a SP field choice type. And this is important to, to specify uh, this kind of uh, type and also field kind type or field type kind is, is number six. And then you need to change the, the variables. All right. So the important part for field choice is the actual choices and you need to specify it as this, the results, and colon, and then a list of values. In my case, red, green, blue. And let's save it and let's test it out. Just to make sure that everything's, everything works as it's supposed to do. It did, great. All right, the last one we need to do is actually update the view. So if we don't do this one, you can't actually see it in the view. It's created in the list behind the scenes it still feels, but, but let's just add it to the default view here. And what I will do here is I will retrieve the list of views. So all of the views that is on this particular SharePoint list, I will just retrieve that. And then I will parse the JSON response I get from that because then I can dynamically choose the, the first one or the default. Um, so it's important you do a test on the get list, copy the response, and then use that as a sample for the JSON. I'll create another parse JSON object or action, and this one will just parse our initial fields metadata object. It makes it easier for us to work with. Uh, we could do it as we did in the send HTTP request, but let's just um, parse the JSON field uh, in order to make it more easy to work with. All right. <laughs> Then let's do an apply to each because we need to loop over uh, the fields we have created and add each field to our list view. So we will check the value from the parse JSON fields metadata, then send an HTTP request. And again, it's a post and the URI for adding um, columns or fields to our list will be underscore API slash web slash list. And then again, you need to choose the GUID and it will be the second ID from the parse JSON create list you need to use. And then it says slash views and we will use the parse JSON response and choose um, the ID. And we need to make sure that we choose the right ID And for us to use the, the right ID, we will just uh, take the first object in our result body, because we could have several uh, list or several views for this specific list, but we will just choose the, the first one. So I will tap into that one uh, result. and then take the ID value for the first. Then we'll do a slash view fields slash add view field. Content type, we can use content, uh, or we can use the content type application JSON. And then in our body, we need to write this str field and then specify the, specify the column name for the field we would like to add. It could also be the internal name, uh, I think. But we will just use the, the title of the column name. Let's run a test. All right, it ran successfully. So if we 
go to SharePoint, it should have created a new list. It's called new test list here. And it had it has added the product name and product color to our view. So there you have it, a quick session on how you can create a Power Automate flow that creates a SharePoint list. Stay tuned for more content.